folks, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Natasha and I do book stuff here. This video is going to be my wrap up for Contemporary-a-thon. If you've watched all my vlogs, you kind of know what books are in here, but I'm going to talk about them a little bit more and then I'll probably sort of gloss over them at my monthly wrap up. So for those of you who might not be aware, Contemporary-a-thon was a read-a-thon that was hosted between November 13th and the 19th with the main goal to read contemporary books. Um, I had a five book TBR and I managed to hit all five. Woo. So first things first, I read the group book as well as the book that has um, LGBTQIA plus rep in it and that is Like Water by Rebecca Poros. I believe I believe there's an accent on that. But this book was the group read and um, I think the general consensus is that we all thought it was like pretty average. I definitely thought it was just okay. I ended up rating it a three star. Um, there's a couple things that I had issues with. There's one very specific use of language in this that like actually pissed me off really bad. So basically what this book is about is about a girl named Vani whose father has Huntington's. Huntington's? Huntington's. I don't know why I want to say Hutchington's. That's something else. Um, has Huntington's Huntington's disease and what she's gonna do staying in this small town or not. She ends up working at a water park as a mermaid and meets this guy and ends up sort of having a female-female romance. Um, it's kind of just an okay story. I feel like this book, there was just too many different elements. I preferred more towards the middle and the end, whereas Chelsea really preferred the beginning, so it's kind of interesting to see what people's preferences are. Um, I did mark off a couple spots in this. Um, and in hindsight, I went back and it wasn't anything super groundbreaking except for the one line in here that really pissed me off. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, she does have this female-female romance. I personally don't like the romantic choice. Um, the girl that she ends up having this romance with, I personally can't stand. She's like not the greatest person, to be totally honest. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just I read this book and was just done with it and went, okay. It was, it was okay. There's nothing, like I said, that was super groundbreaking about it. But yeah, there's one use of language in here that like I don't even feel comfortable saying on my channel. Um, basically, the girl who identifies as a lesbian uses a slang term and calls her this like word and I don't know. It just came across so aggressive in the book that I just kind of went... I don't really care what this character has to say past this point, I no longer like her. I did really like the family dynamic as well as the setting. It takes place in um, a small town in New Mexico and I really like the sort of like Spanish terms and stuff that like um, Chelsea and her boyfriend Aldo went over in one of her vlogs and he, t he kind of like told Chelsea like what they all meant so if you're curious go check that out. Um, I kind of just put two and two together in my own head what they meant, I didn't actually look them up but it was neat to, um, to find out exactly sort of what they all meant. But um, overall, just sort of an average book for me, so I ended up giving it a three star. So after that, I moved on to Anna in the French Kiss. Um, this is also a three star book for me. Here's the thing with this book. Um, this also irritated me to a certain degree. There's a romance in this and there's some underlying like what I consider emotional cheating which I really don't feel okay with. I think I mentioned in my vlogs that like I would prefer somebody physically cheating on me than emotionally cheating on me. That's just my own personal opinion but um, that really pissed me off in this book and the fact that like everyone's just kind of like okay with it. It's just shitty. It's also very unbelievable, the plot. Like, I went into it and people are like, you're gonna have to kind of suspend your belief that this is like any sort of plot that would exist in the real world, like whatsoever. And so I kind of was like, okay. But it's just, there's there's too many things. Like, you know, these rich kids go to Paris for like a school and then like, you know, her dad's a millionaire and all the kids are like fucking running around Paris doing whatever they want and like, I don't know. And then like the main character is supposed to be this super huge film buff and she has no idea like the impact that Paris has had on the film industry and I'm just like, okay, like really? So that tacked on with the emotional cheating sort of aspect of it and just like the different ways that the story goes. It's a little bit hard to get behind. I mean, it's cute enough. I liked it enough, so I gave it a three. Um, mostly what I liked about this though was the actual like talks of Paris and the sort of like exploration of Paris as a city. That I really liked, so that's where the majority of my stars went. But in terms of an actual romance, I'm kind of like, eh. So during the week I ended up listening to an audiobook and that was The Dinner by Herman Ko. Um, this book is like really interesting in the sense that it literally takes place over an entire dinner between this family. You come to find out who all these characters are, 
Um, they're all extremely unlikable, just like quite frankly shitty people. Um, made it sort of like hard and uncomfortable to listen to because you really don't care what happens. And so I finished this and was kind of like, Oh, uh, that's a book I finished. I have no real emotional feelings about this whatsoever. There's a couple parts that I like, like certain discussions in it, but for the most part, it was just, you know, if these characters had even some sort of redeeming quality, I could see myself getting into it and boosting it to like a three-star book. I ended up rating it a three initially on Goodreads, but in hindsight, this is really more of a two, two and a half. Um, just a middle of the way book to me. Um, there are some people I know that really like this, I just kind of didn't. And I think the audiobook definitely didn't help with that. I don't necessarily suggest that you read this unless you're like super interested, which I was. You might get something out of it, but uh, everyone in this book sucks. Every single character, they all, they all suck. So just know that going in that you're not gonna like any single person in this book. And then I decided to go from the dinner into more sort of unlikable characters. Um, no, just decided to pick my hardest book for the week, and that is All the Ugly and Wonderful Things by Bryn Greenwood. Oh, I don't know how to even start this. Um, this is definitely not an easy book, and trigger warning, this talks heavily about a relationship between basically an eight-year-old girl and a 20-something-year-old guy and sort of how that progresses through her lifetime, their lifetime, whatever, um, until she's 21. And it's gross, like it's just gross. And um, the sad thing is though, is that like I've seen bits and pieces of this novel in people that I know in real life and it's like really just bleh. So yeah, big trigger warning for pedophilia, drug use, um, ab abuse, uh, also just like parental, crappiness. Basically everything you don't really want to read about in a book, this pretty much has. So this book follows the main character, Wavy, and it talks pretty much about her life from almost age five, a little bit of age five, but mostly age eight to 21. Um, the beginning of this book though just kind of talks about this kid's upbringing and ugh, like um, her parents are into drugs and are in kind of like a biker gang. Um, her mom has some definite like mental issues mixed with drugs, which is obviously not good for like any situation. She does have a younger brother as well, who like you're kind of just watching this five-year-old take care of a baby on her own. Um, there really is nothing good going on in this child's life at all. The living situations are horrible, the mom's horrible, the dad's horrible, uh, all of the pay like all of the adults in her life are horrible. So her father's friend, kind of like guy working for him named Kellen sort of just appears into her life, decides to sort of swoop in and take care of her and her brother in certain ways. Um, so at the beginning of the book, you are kind of rooting for this guy because he is literally the only person that is taking care of this child in any way, you know, making sure she gets to school and is fed and is clothed and all that stuff. However, um, knowing what I knew about the book going into it, I was able to pick up on like really creepy predatory things very early on, um, long before the character himself sort of like it's written in the book that he realizes that. I, I have to stop at some point, like I, I highlighted a bunch of stuff in this and I have to stop at a certain point because the whole chapters were like getting to me um in terms of like creepy predatory behavior and it's disturbing but this book is a thinking person's book <laughs> and this book made me think about a lot of things as horrible as a relationship between a 12 13 year old and a 26 year old is um especially when it turns into a sexual relationship at the same time you are in a very very screwed up internal like internal turmoil kind of way, you're rooting for this relationship because this is the only person that this kid has. It makes you go like, oh, like why, why am I rooting for this relationship? Um, yeah, it, it's just shitty. <laughs> and it follows them right through uh, till she's 21. You do find out sort of the resolution of this and like, it's just, it's weird um, and it's uncomfortable and it, it's meant to make you feel kind of like, Ugh. you know, which is only like 1% I'm sure of the disgusting feeling that this kid feels in her life. But yeah, I could talk about this forever. It's, I definitely needed to like sit on my feelings about it. Um, this is going to be a book that I think about for years to come. I know that because it's just such a like 
screwed up subject matter. One thing I will suggest though is that Julie from Pages and Pens has a spoiler free review of this as well as one where she talks more in depth with spoilers. Um, I ended up watching both before I read this book and I was interested enough to read this book. Um, so definitely if you're interested or you want to know what goes on in this book without actually reading it, go check out Julie's videos. I'll have them linked down below because she goes way more into detail than I do. Um, like I said, I could talk about this book forever. But all that being said, given the subject matter and it's like really, really, truly hard to read, um, I love the way that this was written. It's told in a lot of different perspectives. Um, you get little chapters of so many different people's point of views. Um, take for example, like teachers, shopkeepers, um, you know, the parents' friends, like all kinds of people. I actually really love that because to me, it gave it almost a documentary feel. Um, it also is equally disturbing in the sense that all these people can see there's something off about this relationship, yet none of them feel like they can do anything about it or that they have like the power to do it or they're not in the situation to do it, anything about it. Um, yeah. So it, it really adds like that other layer than if you were to just get it from like two people's perspective. And for that, I gave the book a four star rating. Um, it's not a five to me because there's obviously some issues with this. There's some like really uh, aggressive language and use of like slurs towards um, Kellen, uh, who is Native American, which I don't appreciate, as well as his sort of intellectual uh, status as well. There's a lot of uses of the R word, which again, I don't appreciate. There's so much other stuff going on in this book that if the usage of those words weren't there, uh, I wouldn't, you know what I mean? Like I wouldn't miss those words if they weren't there. Um, it's just not needed. But yeah, overall, four star book. I've talked about this, I'm sure, long enough now. But uh, definitely the most thought provoking book out of the ones that I read this week. And definitely disturbing if you're looking for a really, truly disturbing read. Uh, pick this one up, but at the same time, please, if you're sensitive to anything that I've mentioned in this, don't read it because I do not want to be the reason why anyone got like emotionally. Um, hurt at all by this book um so yeah massive trigger warnings but um yeah lastly i decided to pick up the happiness again after reading that because it was kind of like really rough to read that book i ended with the little paris bookshop um this is beautiful this is a five star book for me thank god because i hadn't read any five star books that week this is just like so charming and as i was reading it i just thought i immediately want to read this again and i know this is going to be a book that i pick up like so many times over and over again because it's lovely. So this follows the main character Jean Perdue and he is a bookseller and he has a bookshop um, on like a boat on the river in Paris which is adorable and basically he uses books to heal people and I thought there might be like a fantastical element there. There isn't. Um, it's just sort of how he feels and it's never fully explained but I like that and then he sort of just meets all these elaborate characters and then one thing that I didn't expect from this and I loved he takes the boat on like an adventure which if you know me you know I like road trip and adventure novels so I was like losing my shit I was like yeah because like I already liked the book <laughs> and then he goes on an adventure with his little like floating bookshop and I'm just like losing my shit but yeah it's it's super beautiful super cute and he goes all through France into like different towns and meets these like different characters and I, I don't know um I just absolutely loved it there's literally like a quote that I could highlight on nearly every page of this. It's very, very well written in the sense that if you're looking for a book that's just like is super flowery and almost like pretentious in the way that it speaks, <laughs> you kind of go, who the hell talks like this? But at the same time, you're like, I want people to talk like this. This book is just everything. It's also a thinking book as well, but it's a thinking in a positive way. Um, very different from this, obviously. So this talks a little bit about grief and getting over that and life and like what you take from life and emotions and oh it's just it's it's freaking wonderful okay like it's just it's so good and um i said in my vlogs is exactly what my soul needed and it and it is and i think that's why like i'll continue to go back to this because it's beautiful i really really liked it if you're looking for a feel-good book that's written absolutely beautifully um i highly suggest a little paris bookshop and uh even more if you like france and you like paris 
<laughs> this one. I'm so happy I picked this up and I'm like almost want to cry because it's like I'm so happy that this is the book that I bought in Paris like on my honeymoon because it like it's just it means that much more to me now that I really really love the book. So yeah, um, I did kind of cheat though. I definitely finished all four of those books during the readathon. I ended up finishing the last sort of like three hours of reading this on the next day but it's okay. Uh, I finished all the books on my TBR and I definitely had a little break there um, for a bit where I was sick and I didn't get to read so I'm counting it, okay? But yeah, that is my long-winded wrap-up of the five books that I read for contemporary -a -thon. I've managed, oops, I managed to read everything on my TBR. So uh, I consider that a really successful week. I absolutely cannot wait until the next contemporary thon. I know that Julie and Chelsea are kind of playing around with um, when they want to do that. And I am in, I am so in. I love contemporary books. I think they're like one of my favorite genres, if not my favorite genre. Um, so I'm like super here for it. Let me know in the comments down below how you guys did this week and uh, what books you're excited for. Let's have a conversation about any of those if you've read them. And, uh, yeah, I hope everyone's doing good and until my next video, I will talk to all of you soon. Bye!